President al-Assad affirms that those who target Syria seek to destroy the country's infrastructure. Al-Jafari stresses that the Syrian government is performing its constitutional duty of combating terrorism and defending the country's stability. The Syrian Arab army continues to chase armed terrorist groups in different areas and regions. Good afternoon, and I'm Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The newly appointed cabinet ministers were sworn in yesterday before President Bashar al-Assad. During a cabinet meeting, His Excellency affirmed that the current circumstances in Syria have caused citizens to have greater hopes in terms of what they expect of the government. The newly appointed cabinet ministers were sworn in yesterday before President Bashar al-Assad. They included Minister of Public Works Hussein Arnous, Minister of Labor Hassan Hijazi, Agriculture and Agrarian Reform Minister Ahmad Al-Qadiri, Petroleum and Mineral Resources Minister Suleiman Abbas, Finance Minister Ismail Ismail, and Minister of Social Affairs Kinda Shammat. Afterwards, the President chaired the cabinet meeting during which His Excellency said that the current circumstances in Syria caused citizens to have greater hopes in terms of what they expect of the government, which gives all the ministries and state establishments an extra responsibility that must be transformed into positive work. He added that citizens should also perform their duties in order to realize teamwork and alleviate the effects of the crisis. President al-Assad affirmed that the sites targeting Syria worked methodically to destroy the country's infrastructure and even shake up the people's mental and psychological integrity. On his part, Prime Minister Al-Halqi thanked President Al-Assad for his confidence, affirming the government's determination to continue working in order to secure citizens' livelihood needs and the requirements of supporting the armed forces in their work to eliminate terrorist groups. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has affirmed that the Syrian government continues to perform its constitutional duty in protecting Syrian citizens from terrorism and vandalism in order to restore security and stability. Delivering Syria's statement at the UN Security Council's open session yesterday, al-Jafari said, Keenness on Syrian citizens' safety is inconsistent with the policies of certain Arab, regional and Western countries who boast about offering weapons, training and safe haven to the armed terrorist groups who target the Syrian state in all its components. As Rafari said, the governments of those who dealt with the crisis in Syria, relying on criticism, theorization and accusations, are helping to flare up the crisis in the country by either allowing their extremist nationals and terrorists to go to Syria or allowing them to cross into Syria from neighboring countries or through arming, funding and sponsoring those terrorists and promoting them in news media. Al-Jafari added that concern over civilians should neither be interpreted into sponsoring terrorism and extremism or foiling the efforts for a solution nor in practicing pressures to undermine any possibility for a comprehensive national dialogue which can alone restore to the Syrians security and stability and outline their future within a political process determined by the Syrians and run by a Syrian leadership as stressed in UN Security Council's resolutions 2042 and 2043. As Jafari reiterated Syria's emphasis on the need to provide protection for civilians under Israeli occupation in the occupied Arab lands, including the occupied Syrian Golan, and to put an end to the Israeli aggressive practices against them. He affirmed that Israel offers assistance and weapons to the Salafi Takfiri groups that are active in the disengagement area in the occupied Syrian Golan. Therefore, Israel is part of further igniting the crisis in Syria. فوزعوا اتهاماتهم يمينا ويسارا فانني اود ان اشدد على ان حكومات بلادهم 
هم هي جزء أساسي من Iranian Shura Council Speaker Ali Darijani has said the issue of democratic reforms in Syria cannot be realized through arms and terrorist practices as it is an internal matter that can be accomplished only through political dialogue. Addressing Pakistani students in Islamabad, Larijani said the enemy is conspiring against Syria and the Zionist entity has launched a military attack against this country, yet some Islamic states showed no readiness to even condemn the Zionist aggression at least. Larijani stressed that Iran supports the resistance in the region for self-defense and never hides such support, whereas other countries keep sending weapons to Syria to consecrate the bloodshed. Head of the External Relations Committee at the Russian Duma Council, Mr. Alexei Boshkov, has warned that Syria is struggling against an international conspiracy and a serious foreign intervention represented in financial, organizational and military support offered to the opposition. Boshkov said the regime in Syria has no option but defense, adding that had it not been for the huge support from abroad, the government would have been able to enhance control over all Syrian territories. Pashkov added that President Bashar al-Assad was right when he said Syria was facing an international conspiracy. He pointed out that the USA will soon admit the reasons and proofs presented by Russia in its assessment of the situation in Syria. Head of the Russian Rus Oporonis Export Corporation, Anatoly Isaikin, has said technological military cooperation with Syria is developing within the framework of international law and that Russia has supplied Syria with air defense systems according to previously concluded contracts. Isaikin added that Syria is number 13 or 14 among the foreign countries which receive Russian arms supplies. He added that his company did not export Skander missile system or any other offensive arms to Syria. Isaikin denied that his company had signed a contract to supply Syria with MiG-29 fighters, adding that the company has no such contract. He referred to the presence of contracts to supply training jet fighters Yak-130, but they have not been implemented yet, he pointed out. Deputy Foreign Minister Dr. Faisal al-Muqtad reviewed with an Indian media delegation currently visiting Syria the situation in the region and the current events in Syria. Members of the Indian delegation stressed that combating terrorism in Syria does not just concern the Syrian side but all the countries of the world as well. For his part, Dr. al-Muqtad expressed his appreciation for India's moderate attitudes towards the Arab causes in the face of the international blind support of the Zionist project in the region. Dr. al-Muqtad briefed the delegation with the recent political steps taken by the Syrian leadership to end the crisis in the country. Welcome back. Our army units have eliminated several armed men, including the leader of a terrorist group called Hamza Battalion in eastern Ghouta. Another unit killed and wounded a number of terrorists near Zamalka Bridge. Their vehicles used to transport arms and ammunition were also destroyed. In Idlib suburbs, an army unit destroyed a terrorist headquarters in Ihsim and eliminated armed men in the surroundings of Wadi Daif, east of Ma'arat al-Norman. Among the terrorists killed, the founder of the so-called Marahrata Martyrs Battalion was identified. Another army unit killed in the terrorist gatherings in Der Zagab, Magharit al-Qunfud, Majdaliya al-Arshani, Rasm al-Abid, Nahlaya, Kafar Hayya and al and destroyed their criminal equipment. In Aleppo, the internal security forces captured an armed terrorist group in Al Martini and confiscated their weapons. The group alleged to the Syrian to be Syrian army personnel. They had carried out crimes of killing, kidnapping and vandalism.
In an interview with the inhabitants, the residents of a building said an armed group alleging to the Syrian army personnel had stormed into the house of Dr. Salem Badrakhan. Surprised at the violent break-in, the inhabitants called the police, who immediately came to the spot and captured the armed men and seized their rifles, bombs, ammunition and a pickup vehicle. In the wake of the attack by terrorist gunmen on the Lebanese army in Arsal region near the Syrian borders, Lebanese Red Cross sources said that ambulances carried four wounded persons affiliated with so-called Free Army militias in Arsal after crossing the Syrian borders illegally. The Lebanese National News Agency pointed out that the terrorists were transported to hospitals in Biqa and Tripoli. The wounded terrorists included Mohammed Khaled Al Ahmed, Mohammed Zakaria, Yahya Hazem Fayyad and Muhammad Ahmed Luau. Egypt's state news agency said today that three masked gunmen have attacked the car of the central bank governor, killing his bodyguard and stealing the vehicle. The bank chief was not in the car. A news source added the bodyguard and the driver were on their way to pick up newly appointed central bank chief Hisham Ramiz when the assailants opened fire on the governor's car, killing the bodyguard and forcing the driver to pull over. The gunmen then drove off in the car. Egypt has been hit by an unprecedented wave of violent crime, including armed robbery, kidnapping and car theft since the Muslim Brotherhood ruled the country. In Bahrain, police used tear gas to disperse hundreds of demonstrators who tried to reach a major square in the capital, Al Manama, which had witnessed two years ago deadly clashes between protesters and police troops. An opposition coalition consisting of several parties called for staging new demonstrations and a general strike at Lu'lu'a Square tomorrow to mark the second anniversary of the popular protests against the current political regime. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad stressed that Iran has become a nuclear state, pointing out that his country will refuse any proposals which do not conform with international laws. Nejad said during a meeting for the Iranian cabinet that Iran's enemies tried to prevent his country from processing peaceful nuclear energy, but they failed adding that Iran is hopeful about the success of negotiations with the group of 5 plus 1 in Kazakhstan, stressing that the two sides should reach an agreement through dialogue. Nijad called on the International Nuclear Energy Agency to perform its duties away from any pressures. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more news about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Khaled Saqabani after a short break. Good afternoon, and I'm Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The newly appointed cabinet ministers were sworn in yesterday before President Bashar al-Assad. During a cabinet meeting, His Excellency affirmed that the current circumstances in Syria have caused citizens to have greater hopes in terms of what they expect of the government. The newly appointed cabinet ministers were sworn in yesterday before President Bashar al-Assad. They included Minister of Public Works Hussein Arnous, Minister of Labor Hassan Hijazi, Agriculture and Agrarian Reform Minister Ahmad Al-Qadiri, Petroleum and Mineral Resources Minister Suleiman Abbas, Finance Minister Ismail Ismail, and Minister of Social Affairs Kinder. <laughs> Al-Jafari stresses that the Syrian government is performing its constitutional duty of combating terrorism and defending the country's stability. Syrian Arab Army
President al-Assad affirms that those who target Syria seek to destroy the country's infrastructure. He continues to chase armed terrorist groups in different areas and regions.